And she's and she and she wrote this in the order of, of, of obesity. Mm-hmm. And asked about about especially in the African American churches. So I say God for myself. So I don't understand man. Who are we? What are we made of? And I and I and I was teaching to my to my medical students about going back here. I was trying to teach my medical students about really learning about what is man. I want to understand the diseases. What is man? How did how God made it? Well, first thing, we are a three part whole. We have a body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. We have a function, we have a personality, and we have a purpose, our spirit. That's it. That's it again? Yes, sir. We are made of body, we have a soul, and we have a spirit. So we are a three part combination and, and, uh, as mankind. So what is our body? First thing, our body is our, it's the function. It's composed of organs, cells, uh, consists of proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Consists of systems, like our nervous system, nerves and brains. And it's through our body that we connect to the physical world, through our five, through our senses, touch, smell, hearing, feeling, uh, seeing, our five senses. So we all have a body. Amen? Every, every man kind of has a body. Amen. So what is our soul? It's our personality. It's through our soul that we live out our relationship with God, with other people, and with ourselves. Our soul has, has three major components. Our mind, our will, and our emotions. Mm-hmm. Okay? Our mind, our will, and our emotions. And our mind, every human being has a mind has two parts. We have a conscious part, right. and we have a <laughs> subconscious part. Yeah. The conscious part is what we think, how we think, how we reason. But there, but there is a subconscious part that, that holds deep to our beliefs, our attitude, where we have our feelings, our emotions, and retain our memories. And our will is what gives us the ability to make choices. This is something that makes us, makes us human right here. It's our soul. Mm-hmm. A lot of animals don't have this part. They don't have a, free, a lot of animals don't have free will. Uh, a duck is going to do what a duck's supposed to do. Right. I tell people a fish is going to do what a fish is supposed to do. Mm-hmm. All, they all have certain orders of life they follow, but God has given us a free will to make choices. And our spirit, man, this is what God changes right here. This is the part that changes. It's, it's, our, it's, it's our deepest level in our, in our bodies. It enables us to love one another, ourselves, and, our, and, and God. It's through our spirit that we have communion and fellowship with God. And our spirit gives us intuition between right and wrong. And when you and when our spirit is taken over by the Holy Ghost Spirit, mm. it really becomes real important. Mm. So every man has a spirit. Mm. Paul said, we all got the same, we all got one member. I tell people all the time, the saints we are, we truly the saints we are bipolar. We have two natures. Paul said, when I, when I want to do good, evil is present on every hand. He said, there's two, there's two, there's two members more inside of me. So the saints, we do have two members. We have two, we have our, we have the, we have the, our flesh, spirit, human spirit, and then we have the spirit of God that lives in us. And then wherever you feed is what come out. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Wherever you feed mm-hmm. is what That's comes right. out. That's right. So wherever you feed, so and so somebody asked me all the time, Dr. Buckles, uh, well can a saint, can a saint have the Holy Ghost and speak in tongue and be mean? Yes, they can. That's right. They feed the wrong spirit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they can be mean as a rattlesnake, speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. Because they're feeding the wrong spirit. There's two members inside of us. So right. this is the part that we want to deal with. And this, and all three of these have to in order to be benefit for the kingdom, they need to work together. Right. Our body, our soul, and our spirit. Now, 1 Corinthians 6 chapter, 19 to the 21st says, Do you know that your body is a, is a temple what? Of the Holy Ghost, who's in you, whom you have received from God. You are not your own. You are brought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. Now, a lot of times in the church, I've known, I've known people to use the scriptures to talk about why people shouldn't get tattoos. 
<laughs> talk about why people should get in ear piercing. Right. Talk about all type of stuff, but that's not really what that scripture meant. Matter of fact, if you read the scripture, Paul was dealing with sleeping with uh, sleeping with a prostitute. Yeah. Right. He was dealing with sex. He wasn't dealing with the body like the body, tattoos and stuff. But what happened was during that time, there was a Corinthian who was claiming that as the physical acts of eating and digestive food have no bearing on one's inner spiritual life. So the physical acts of promiscuous sexual activity does not affect one's spiritual life. They were trying to say that, and Paul said that is not true. That's why he wrote this, this scripture here. And they were trying to say it has nothing to do with how you live. Wow. And so Paul declared, by, and, and he had to read the whole chapter, okay, he showed them that, yes, indeed, what you do in your body is very important. Yes. Amen. What you do in your body is very important. So a lot of times the saints, we would we would judge people by their tattoos, mm -hmm. judge people by their earrings, stuff, and we would say nothing about our bodies. Oh, Woo! Right. Right. Ah. Jesus. Nothing about our bodies. We have more to say about somebody got ten tattoos, but yeah, we overweight. Right. The body is the body. It's, it's everything oh, important. Sir. And I'm learning. I said, Lord, we help me and my body. And let the saints work on everything. All of our bodies be better stewards Amen. of our body. That's right. So our body do belong, it does belong to God. That's right. We become united with will and belong to Christ and become stewards. God, we are stewards, look at this, we are guardians of oh, yeah. our bodies. Mm. We talk about stewardship because of money, finance, but also we are stewards of our body. We have a responsibility, y'all, caring for our bodies, seeing that nothing harms or profane it. We are good when it comes to cigarette smoking. <laughs> Right. We're good when it comes to alcohol, some of, some of us. Uh oh. You know, drugs. But we are terrible when it comes to eating the right food. Right. right. Or, 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 or trying to take care of ourselves. You know, you, you have high blood pressure and still live a great life. Okay? Don't let the disease conquer you. I see too many people give up. Right. Mm -hmm. Even in church, they mm -hmm. give up. You, the doctor tells you you need to lose so much, or, or you, tell, you need to lose so much pounds to not take medicine. I heard people tell me, just give me the medicine. Yeah. Oh. Jesus. I can't do it. What do you mean you can't do it? Right. Woo. You know? Yeah. So the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus free us from the, the, the dominion. Look, look at this. Free us from the what? The dominion, dominion of, of sin. sin. Dominion of yeah. sin. Yeah. Come on, this okay. And you're not saying that you that you're not able to sin. But you have now you have a choice control. not to sin. Self-control. Right. Yes, sir. Self-control. It, it allows to give you the choice. You say, "Now I'm free from the curse." Temperance, I'm yes, free sir. Free from the temptation. Right. Yes. That was sin will cause. So sin through our body and passion should not rule over our body. Romans six and First Peter. Our body should be under the complete control of the Ooh, Holy Ghost. Glory. Yes. Yeah. It really should be. And as you walk with Christ, you should want more. I said, "Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Help me. Mm -hmm. I want the Holy Ghost to control more of my flesh." Put this under submission. That's good. So, why do we need to help keep the to be kingdom minded? It's all for the what? It's for the glory of God. God. Yes, sir. Yes. A healthy body brings honor and glory to God as a better condition to be used in his service. Mm -hmm. Paul, Psalms 103 says what? Declares that God promised to what? He us of what? Oh. All of he promised that. But he also made us responsible to care for our own Help. We want God to do everything. You know, the doctor said you got diabetes, and and you know you're gonna eat that cheese, that piece of cheesecake. All you know, every now and then it's okay. Mm. But you know, God, please, please, got my mind, got my hands, and you you still going to the store to get it. <laughs> <laughs> God, help me, help me with this piece of cheesecake. You should have, don't even go that way. That makes an effort. For you to set yourself up for failure. <laughs> you see yourself for failure. <laughs> So, our bodies are what? A value to God. I like this, y'all. When God created a man, he made a physical being. He gave us labor, he gave us food. But then Psalms 139, 13 and 6 says, God knitted us together in our mother's womb. He's fearfully and wonderfully made us. I like this. I like we are yes. fearfully and wonderfully made by God. Yes, hallelujah. He said we are made in the secret place. Yes, God. In the depth of the earth. And even Jesus himself, and you read in the gospel, he provided food for the people and physical healing. All as believers, we are called to steward our bodies 